Lucky Laricia, Vice President and Head of Cloud Software and Services at Ericsson Middle East and Africa. It's great to have you back with us at Economy Middle East. And thanks for having me. It's uh, great to catch up again. Uh, Leap 2025, bigger and better than ever, isn't it? Concept of new worlds or entering new worlds, and this surely is a great world. And um, off the back of that, maybe you could tell us a little bit about Ericsson's presence here at Leap 2025, highlight some of the AI-driven automation, optimization, and also outline some of the opportunities you're particularly looking forward to. Yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity at Leap to actually demonstrate, but also have that conversation together with our clients and customers. If you start with an intelligent network, essentially what we're trying to do is build the flexibility, the scale, and the programmability of the network in order to take advantage of 5G, 5G standalone, and creating what we call differentiated connectivity. And that allows then for different experiences and different qualities of service for different consumer or enterprise groups. And that's the, the flexibility that the, the networks of the future are really going to bring. Wonderful. AR and VR experiences powered by 5G are transforming industries, whether it's healthcare, energy, entertainment. Can you share some uh, immersive cases that you're working on? Yeah, I, I really love one case at our stand that we're presenting right now, and that's our, our robot. Our robot actually detects uh, with sensors, but also can close the loop, can take action on a potential fire that sits in a situation. And it's doing that not only by understanding its surrounds, but it's also using AI and ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning, to be able to take decisions in different circumstances. And that's what we talk about, making the intelligent network aware and also able to take action. Wonderful. And I want to bring the question back to Saudi Arabia. How is uh, Ericsson's technology supporting Saudi's sustainability goals with regards to Vision 2030 and also the digital transformation goals alike? Yeah, I, I think Ericsson's synonymous with being able to innovate in different circumstances and, and really what the Kingdom of Saudi is embarking upon is truly impressive. And two things really come to my mind. The first is the energy saving that comes around with the new portfolio of radios. We take into account a lot of the requirements that come from the Saudi market and our R&D is built upon that. And that's, that's a great green initiative, um, but it's also a great user experience initiative in that sense. The second one is really spurring the digital economy. Uh, whether we talk about financial payments or fintech, uh, which we're embarked on here in the Kingdom of Saudi, or whether we're creating new revenue streams and possibilities with differentiated connectivity for either enterprise and hence mobile broadband, this digitized economy is all about securing that it's low touch, um, but it's also a high user experience. So creating the flexibility in the network, the capability in the network, and it's all at the heart of you know, growing the consumer and enterprise experience. Great, and finally, I'd like to get your expertise and your uh, kind of thoughts on the trends that are shaping the ICT landscape here in the Middle East Africa region. How is Ericsson positioning itself? And looking ahead, uh, what does the innovations and in projects in the region look like? No, it's an exciting period coming up, I must say. But, you know, if I start with the intelligence part, you know, we have great networks at 5G. We talk about 5G advanced or even moving to 6G. It's the flexibility and the intelligence that's coming. So that'll, that'll be a huge trend. And what do I mean by that? The introduction of artificial intelligence and machine learning across all of the product portfolio suite. As an example with cognitive software, it means that the network can gain insights, but also take action in particular scenarios. If I take about operating a network, our uh, operations engine talks about using machine learning, but also uh, large language models to be able to interrogate the network and work out in an automated fashion what to do and how to do it. And the user just controls and presses the execute button in that sense. Um, the cloud and the core is starting to become key to the innovation piece. The cloud means that you'll distribute far more compute and far more processing around the different parts of the network. It gives you flexibility in different use cases. Um, but also what we're going to see is that that core network is going to expose via APIs 
the characteristics that will help you open up the network to develop a community, these different applications, take advantage in different scenarios of what I want to do. Whether I want to take advantage of a network slice that gives a different quality of service to an enterprise or a, a different user group, or whether I want to provide on-demand quality of service increase to a particular gamer, cloud gamer sitting there and saying, well, I want to pay a little bit extra to have a better service. So, you know, all of these trends are wrapped up into the great software that's being developed by our R&D engineers, together with the requirements from our customers. It's going to be a super ex exciting period coming forward. Sounds very interesting. As always, thank you for your in-depth insights and thank you for joining us here at Economy Middle East.